Hey guys, it's Troll9002 back with you again at 2.49 a.m. on October 5th, 2020. I, um, had a pretty rocky week. I don't want to talk about it. I just want to get to the story today. It's called, Did You Know About Glasses? It was a dark, cold, rainy day. Emily was at the library doing some research on her family history. She had found some boxes in the house she had recently moved into. It had been in the family for a long time. Her aunt had inhabited it before she moved in. The house was too big for her aunt to handle, so she moved into Emily's apartment and Emily moved into the house. It was a beautiful dark wood Tudor style house, said to attract everything including souls. Until now, Emily thought that was just a saying that ran in the family. Sometimes when she would blurt it out in an awkward moment, it would make people laugh, so it became her party line. Emily didn't go out a lot, and she just felt better keeping to herself. No drama, no fuss, no muss. She liked her routine of going to work and coming home. She was known as an apparel specialist. She could accessorize and fit you in any outfit in less than 15 minutes. The only rule she had was that you did not lie to her and you wouldn't lie to and she wouldn't lie to you. If she didn't like the way it looked on you, she wouldn't accessorize it. And if you didn't wear it back to the store at least once after you bought it, that was an insult and she would never help you again. Emily was not paid commission. It was just her work ethic to make people look good. Emily's aunt and mother were costume seamstresses. It ran in the family. And even though Emily did not inherit the gene for sewing, she made her own accessorizing gene, which put her in just as good for helping out with the family business. Her aunt had everything every her aunt had every now and then, but most of her time she was sorry. She helped her aunt every now and then, but most of the time was spent at the store accessorizing strangers. Her aunt thought that the, a retail store a big chain retail setting would help Emily get over her shyness and get her used to people. Aunt Anna didn't understand what it was like for Emily, but that is another story. Emily liked to wander around her aunt's house. There were lots of built-in bookcases full of books. Emily loved to read, so it was paradise for sure. Lots of benches in front of windows to sit and look out or sit and read books, or just for a day to sit out and be lonely. Emily liked days like that when she was alone. It would drive some people crazy, but it was her thing. The books in the house were older than anything in the town's library, and there were no volumes of encyclopedias at all. That is the only reason Emily had to go to the library. She was hoping one day the local thrift store would, would get in a whole set of encyclopedias. That way she would no longer have to go out to the library. No luck in the past four years, but Emily remained hopeful that one day it would happen. Finally, after hours of not finding what she was looking for at the, li at the library, Emily gave up, and she came back t out to the house to settle in for the afternoon slash evening. Since it was cold and rainy, this constituted a good book and hot chocolate by the fireplace. Most relaxful way to spend the evening. Emily had to stop in and pick up some milk, which she really didn't want to do, but the end was going to be worth worth the means. The reason she didn't want to get the milk is because it usually bothered her, but in this case it was going to be okay. She got out of the car running through the rain, and she figured since her favorite thrift store was next to the grocery store, she'd run in to check real quick. The thrift store and the grocery store paired, paired very well for Emily. The clerk smiled at her and said hello, and she meowed at the lady like she usually did. That might seem funny, but the woman always thought that Emily was a shut-in or a cat lady and had expressed as much in her outward-voiced opinion no one ever asked for. It was not worth it to Emily to waste the brain cells to explain, so Emily just let the woman think what she wanted. Emily's favorite stock boyfriend had a big meerkat grin on his face as he said, Hey, what's up, Em? Guess what? Em blew past him as she, and apologized as she saw the shine of gold from a shelf of encyclopedias. 
She turned around and said, Tyler, are they all there? He said, every last volume. She jumped with glee and excitement. Tyler! The stock boy giggled in joy at Emily's reaction. He knew she had been waiting a long time for this. How much, she said. Three hundred bucks, Emily. Emily hollered, charge it! Tyler helped her get the books out to the car. She could swear after loading them in her small car that it was tipping to the right. As Tyler laughed, he said, no, it's all in your mind. This volume of encyclopedias won't tip your car over. You'll be fine. And so Emily ran into the grocery store for the milk. So excited, she grabbed the wrong milk and didn't realize it till she got home. She went in and put the milk in the fridge first and proceeded to wheel the books into the house. She called her aunt to let her know she was adding to the book collection. Her aunt warned her to stay out of the room to the right of the stairs. It wasn't fit for books or people, and there was no way to fix it. Emily was just happy to have what she had, and she lugged them in the house. I mean, who wants to lug books upstairs anyway, right? After settling in for the evening, Emily started inspecting the books for flaws and other issues, even though the store said it was fine. Emily wondered, turning the pages of every book, when she got to the last one, which honestly was one book too many for the set. She noticed it was way older than the set, and she was curious. So she busted out Google and found out it was an original 1768 encyclopedia, which was worth, worth over $3,000. All according to the condition, of course. Emily thought it was an amazing condition for the book that was 200 years old. She immediately put it in a plastic storage bag and would deal with it in another day. As Emily took the boxes to the trash cans outside, she noticed a case in the box she had missed. It was a glasses case. It looked modern, like it was made out of plastic, and it had something inside it. She opened it, and as she did, the sky lit up with a bolt of lightning which scared the crap out of Emily. She ran back in the house with the case and the contents. When that happened, she felt like a schoolgirl, and once safe inside, she giggled, but immediately turned her attention back to the case and opened it to find the most appealing pair of glasses inside. They were bejeweled and very shiny. Emily loved cat eye glasses. It was the current frame she was not only wearing, but trying to bring back into style. She set them on the mantel to the fireplace for the night and made the hot chocolate. It was only after she dumped the Hershey's chocolate into the milk that she looked at the label that it was organic. For some reason, Emily's body either couldn't or had a hard time breaking down organic milk, and it gave her horrible gas, but she didn't care. She had lots of gas pills that usually worked. The only bad thing about this is they made her sleepy. So she decided to proceed on and drink the hot chocolate. It was most divine, and she enjoyed every drop of it. She had one more day off, so it would be okay, too. Emily cheated and made Toll House cookies, chocolate chip, of course, to go with her cocoa. She had... It was not something she did very often, but when she had the time to do it, she did it. Much like an amazing bonfire outside with cold drinks and people, not friends, just people, it was her favorite thing to do. Emily was smart and she took the pill before she started drinking the hot cocoa. So when she finished, she was sleepy and let the fire burn out, then she took herself to bed. Emily had set herself up in the room, to the left of the off-limits room, and she dragged herself upstairs to bed and crashed. Later on that night, there was a huge clap of thunder that awoke Emily, and she was somewhere in between that awake and asleep state, and she put her glasses on and decided to check out the house to make sure everything was okay. Walking down the stairs, she noticed the glasses case that was on the mantel had fallen to the floor. With her attention focused solely on the case, she tripped over a chair leg and fell, flat on her face. And her glasses, her glasses went flying. Emily was blind without her glasses, and it was dark. As she was frantically flailing her arms around, trying to find her glasses, she found them, she put them on her face and opened her eyes, but still couldn't see. She gave up, figured it was all in her head, and went back upstairs. When she got to the top, she saw a green fluttering light around 
un under the door of the room that was forbidden. Curious and still half asleep, she wandered on into the room and was awakened by the glorious sea of floating green orbs. Everywhere, Emily was amazed by the sight. She just laid on the floor and was just admiring what she was looking at. Kind of like stargazing, but inside. Emily felt so at home in the room, she fell back to sleep with no worry of the storm that was raging outside. By morning, everything was fine, and when Emily awoke again, all the green orbs were gone, and it was just another room in the house. Emily couldn't remember how she got in the room. No matter, she got up and got going. When she walked out of the room, she turned and walked right into the door. Smack! Ouch! Her glasses were on her face. What in the world? She, le she felt her way to the bathroom. The glasses she put on were the ones that were in the case, the glasses case that was downstairs. As she looked around the room, the green orbs that were there in the night were gone. Emily called her aunt right away to inquire about the room. After about a three-hour story and a lot of unbelievable details and coincidences, it turns out the floating orbs were souls. The gullible souls are lured out by the shiny stones in the winged part of the glasses. They were drawn out by the light of the person wearing them. So, the souls see the light, and they think it's time to go home, and they just fly over and are trapped into the stones. The only release is that room. Eventually, the souls will go through a soul straw portal and be catapulted back to their owners. On their, on their own, no hexes or spells required. But they had to go back on their own time. Shakespeare once said, The eyes were the windows to the soul. Now imagine if you saw a beautiful light with four souls. Wouldn't you want to hang out? So Native Americans believe that cameras are soul stealers. Other cultures believe it is because your soul is the light within you and the camera just sucks it out and you end up on the film. Your soul is on the film. And others believe that having your picture taken upsets the gods. And because I've seen the orbs in the house I used to live in, I know glasses are the way to see souls. That's why everyone doesn't wear them. Glasses, that is. So the next time you make fun of somebody for wearing glasses, though I think on this channel we are all grown enough not to have to worry about it, just remember, it could be those glasses attracting your ever-curious soul into the shiny freedom in the gem or bling of the glasses. Now, I have seen this room, it does exist, and just for fun, I think I will take you there now. So buckle up, hold on, we're going for a ride. Here we are. It's the room with all the orbs and the souls. There have been some remodeling over the years, but people mostly stay out of the room. Some of the orbs you see are bigger than others. Well, that's just people with bigger hearts and more light in their soul. But if you ever find yourself without a soul, please do not come seek me. Your soul must return on its own. I hope you all have a great weekend, a great week, and uh, this is Troll9002 signing out amongst the orbs, and I, um, I'll catch you on the next page turn. Take care, be well, love y'all.